In today's video, we'll be comparing the Boston Terrier and the Toy Poodle. Both of these amazing breeds are known for their trainability and companionship. Let's see how they compare head to head. Welcome back to the Fenrir Boston Terrier Show. My name's Franny and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about Boston Terriers. Then, how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect Boston Terriers. So if you're a lifelong Boston Terrier lover, thinking about getting one or just started your journey with your new Boston Terrier, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Boston Terrier video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll take a deeper look at the main differences between these two breeds. Let's dig right into each breed's histories to get a better look at how our cherished modern canines were developed. The Boston Terrier's history is up for debate depending on what sources you look at. People don't agree on much, but one thing remains consistent. A Boston Terrier by the name of Hooper's Judge was bred and he was owned by R.C. Hooper. Though it's up for debate whether Hooper's Judge was imported by William O'Brien and sold to Hooper, or Hooper imported the dog himself. Hooper's Judge was thought to be the result of crossing a Bulldog, a French Bulldog and an English White Terrier. These dogs became popular in the 1800s with the upper class. They were often cared for by coachmen who had moved to the England who had moved from England to the US and were already knowledgeable with dog breeding, which led them to breeding the dogs with or without their bosses knowing. Though that still believe that Hooper's judge offspring and future generations are what created the Boston Terrier as we know today. The toy poodle, much like the Boston Terrier, is shrouded in mystery. Some people believe these dogs originally came from the East or Africa and they found their way to Europe from Portugal. Others believe this breed originated in Eastern Europe like its cousins the Standard and Miniature Poodles. It's even believed to be a possibility that German soldiers took these dogs to France during the war and that's why France is listed as their country of origin, even though they first appeared in Germany. What we do know for certain is that the Toy Poodle became popular with European royalty in the 17th and 18th centuries. Toy Poodles have seen a myriad of uses through history, such as truffle hunting and even as circus dogs in France. But it's so a surprise for such an intelligent pooch. Moving along to appearance, these dogs don't have much in common at all. The Boston Terrier stands between 38 and 43 centimetres tall and weighs from 6.8 to 11.4 kilograms. While the Toy Poodle stands between 24 and 28 centimetres tall, and weighs between 3 and 6 kilograms. These very different dogs also have very different grooming needs. The Boston Terrier is low maintenance with a short, tight coat. A weekly groom will help keep their coat healthy and also help to create a good bond with these social dogs. It's important to expose them to nail trimming and such as puppies since they can be very sensitive. This is unlike the Toy Poodle, they have an extremely dense single coat. They'll need brushing daily to avoid mats and tangles despite the fact that they don't shed much. And it's a good idea to have them professionally groomed and taken care of every six to eight weeks. Their ears will need to be plucked and cleaned on a regular basis and they can form tear stains if their eyes aren't wiped regularly. That's a lot for such a small canine. This moves us into trainability for each breed. The Boston Terrier is eager to please and intelligent. This makes them easy to train with the right leadership. They need a firm yet gentle hand to put them on the right path. Early socialisation is especially important for this breed to grow into a confident adult and should not be overlooked. You'll want to expose them to different situations from an early age and training should begin then as well. This breed is also quite athletic and will enjoy things like fly ball, agility and even obedience training. The Toy Poodle is also intelligent and is an extremely fast learner, which like other highly intelligent breeds means they pick up bad habits just as quickly as good ones, so their training needs a start as early as possible. They need a fair, consistent leader to set boundaries and put them on the right path. They love to learn new things and it makes them great for canine sports of all kinds. They also thrive on attention so sports such as fly ball and agility are particularly appealing to this breed. Though it may be helpful to keep training sessions short and it's important to provide a variety of training, it will help keep the toy poodle focused and interested in training. Both of these wonderful dogs love their families and thrive off attention. The Boston Terrier are known to be excitable and boisterous which means they get along well with children but supervision is a must where small kids are concerned. They may lend themselves better to a household with slightly older children where the likelihood of an accident is decreased. This breed doesn't always get along best with other dogs and that's part of the reason socialisation from an early age is so important. 
The more they're exposed to when they're young, the more confident they'll be as adults. And they shouldn't be trusted around strange cats or other small pets either. Their terrier nature means they may give chase at any moment. Though if they were raised around a cat, they're usually okay. Toy poodles also do well with children, but should be watched carefully with small children due to their size. It could easily lead to an accident, so this breed is also better suited for a family that had children who are older and know how to behave around a small dog. It's very important for kids to know how to handle and play with a small breed as well, so they don't accidentally hurt them. They generally get along with other dogs, so as long as they've been properly socialised and a toy poodle who's grown up around a cat will be fine with that particular cat. Though they probably wouldn't think anything of chasing a cat that they don't know, so it's always best to keep an eye on them and be careful when introducing them to new animals. In either case, a family will find an eager and devoted canine companion. Both breeds are better suited to families with older children. They're energetic, willing to please and happy to learn new tricks and skills. The Boston Terrier and Toy Poodle are both energetic breeds that excel in canine sports and need some sort of structured training to be at their best. Though the Boston Terrier is much easier in the grooming department than the Toy Poodle, Poodle. That's certainly one of the biggest, if not the biggest difference when comparing these two breeds. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comment section below and don't forget, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe as we have three dedicated Boston Terrier videos coming here every week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Boston Terrier Show.